In a way, Netflix's Squid Game has been one giant red light green light. When it came out, it hit us with the red light. We all stopped what we were doing and checked it out. From there, it's been green light ever since. Squid Game has become a tour de force, not just for Netflix, but entertainment in general. Well, I've got 107 facts here about Squid Game, each vying to be the best. When the dust settles, let me know your favorite and also... Welcome to Cinematica, your new home for all things movies and TV. From Doctor Who to Harry Potter, we'll be going through all your favorites and favorites you didn't even know you had. Before we begin, we publish new videos every week. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. This is 107 facts about Squid Game. Number one, it takes a village to make anything. But from its inception, Squid Game was the work of one guy. Squid Game was created, written, and directed by Korean filmmaker Hwang Dong-hyuk. Number two, Hwang first started writing Squid Game all the way back in 2008. At the time, Hwang tried and failed to secure investment for a different movie that he'd written. Number three, without funding for his movie, he fell into some serious financial trouble. Hwang, his mother, and even his grandmother had to take out loans just to keep their heads above water. Number four, even though his finances were looking dire, Hwang made sure to find some creative escape. He regularly visited manga cafes and read Japanese survival stories like Battle Royale and Liar Game. He compared those stories to his own situation, imagining a Battle Royale style situation where he could earn money to pay off debts. Number 5. And so the first inkling of Squid Game was formed. Huang started writing a script about the concept all throughout 2009. Number 6. Once the script was finished, Huang tried selling it to various Korean production companies and actors. Unfortunately, he still had no takers. He was told it was too grotesque and unrealistic. Number 7. So, having gotten nowhere, Huang put his script on the back burner. Thankfully, he still made three different films over the next 10 years. A crime drama, Silenced, a comedy, Miss Granny, and a historical drama called The Fortress. Number 8. While Huang was making waves in Korean cinema, Netflix started dipping their toes into the Asian market. In 2018, they leased an office space in Seoul, optimistic about finding the next Stranger Things outside of America. Number 9. Huang blew the dust off his Squid Game script and pitched it to Netflix. One of Netflix's content officers for Asia, Kim Min Young, knew Huang from The Fortress. Sure enough, when Kim read Squid Game, she knew it was perfect for Netflix. Number 10. Huang brought back the old script because 10 years later he felt that these unbelievable survival stories are so fitting. He saw how the world had changed over the past decade and felt that people would find it intriguing and realistic. Number 11. So Netflix ordered the script, but with a caveat. Huang initially presented a 120 minute movie, but Netflix wanted to expand the story into a series. Number 12. Of course, Huang obliged. To expand his story beyond a feature length film, Huang placed a greater emphasis on the relationship between people and the stories that each of the people had. Number 13. From the beginning, Huang originally wanted to call the story Squid Game, but Netflix didn't go for it. Instead, Netflix wanted to call it Round 6. Number 14. According to Kim Min Young, Netflix was worried that the name Squid Game wouldn't track outside of Korea, because viewers beyond Korea wouldn't be familiar with the children's game. Number 15. Eventually, Netflix came around and changed the name back to Squid Game. They realized that the title sounded cryptic and mysterious enough to pull people in. Number 16. From the jump, Huang was determined to make Squid Game as successful as it possibly could could be. When he wrote the script, he set out to make it the most watched Netflix show in the US in a single day. Number 17. While the final show clocked in at 9 episodes, Huang initially wrote Squid Game as an 8 episode series. However, the final episode was so long that he decided to split it into two different ones. Number 18. Squid Game plays with a number of different themes and messages, but Huang has boiled it down to one ultimate concept. Huang said that at its core, Squid Game is a story about losers. Number 19. To name the characters, Huang pulled from his own life. Sung Gi Hun, Cho Sung Woo, and Oh Il Nam all share names with Huang's childhood friends that he played games with as a kid. Number 20. Not just the players are named for Huang's friends. Director Huang was also buddies with a Huang Jun Ho, just like the police officer in Squid Game, who even had an older brother named Huang In Ho, like frontman. Number 21. As for the two main characters of Squid Game, Gi Hun and Sung Woo, Huang based them and their personalities on two 
aspects of himself, two different personal experiences he's lived. Number 22. Like Gihan, Huang was raised by a single mother without a lot of money and grew up in Sangmun district in Seoul. In Korea, Sangmun district has a reputation for being one of the neighborhoods in Seoul. Number 23. At the same time, just like Songwoo, Huang attended Seoul National University, carrying huge expectations from both his family and his whole neighborhood. Number 24. For Gihun's backstory, Huang took inspiration from the Songyang motor label strike of 2009. As Gihun describes in his own story, Songyang employees banded together and protested against the company's mass layoffs. Number 25. Huang used childhood games as the basis for the Squid Game proper because he found it ironic that these games he once played with zero consequences suddenly became battles of life and death. Number 26. Because Squid Game was originally supposed to be a film, Huang decided to use children's games with simple, easy to understand rules, instead of the more complex rules of survival games in other films. Number 27. As for the Squid Game itself, it was an actual game that kids played in Korea. It was especially popular in the 1970s and 1980s when Huang was growing up. Number 28. The Squid Game was actually Huang's favorite game to play as a kid. He loved how physically aggressive it was and would regularly play it in the alleys of his neighborhood. Number 29. So of all the games to pick from, why did Huang put Squid Game into the spotlight? According to Huang, it's a game that best reflects today's competitive society. Number 30. Even the red and blue dokji squares carry some symbolism. The colors are based on a Korean urban legend, blue paper red paper. Basically, a ghost jumps out of your toilet and makes you pick between blue or red toilet paper. If you pick blue, the ghost suffocates you. If you pick red, the ghost skins you alive. Like the dokji game itself, it's a trap, a lose-lose situation. Number 31. For the first proper squid game, red light, green light, Huang chose it because he wanted a game that could eliminate a ton of players from the very start. Number 32. With so many people playing red light, green light, all moving in tandem to the music, Huang described the scene as a ridiculous but sad group dance. Number 33. The Dalgona candy from the second game was a popular Korean street food in the 70s and 80s. Of course, it's still around today if you ever wanted to try some yourself. Number 34. If you recall, Gihun survives by licking the Dalgona to melt the umbrella out. This is exactly what Huang would do when he was a kid. That way, he could pop the shape out of the candy without breaking it. Number 35. Huang joked with the production team that once Squid Game dropped, Dalgona sales would skyrocket. Sure enough, he was absolutely right. Across the world, demand for Dalgona soared. Number 36. There were a number of other children's games Huang considered putting into Squid Game. For example, there's Gongi, a game traditionally played with pebbles. It's kind of like jacks. You throw a pebble up in the air and have to pick up increasing numbers of pebbles before you catch the airborne one. Number 37. Another kid's game, Dong 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 Daemun, is named for East Grand Gate of Seoul. The game is very similar to London Bridge is falling down. You and other players form arches with your arms and somebody has to run through without getting caught. Number 38. Like Gongi, the game Why Did You Come to My House even gets mentioned as a possible game in the show. It's like Red Rover with two teams playing against each other. However, instead of charging to break locked arms, players settle things with a game of rock, paper, scissors. Number 39. Once Huang started writing Squid Game, it was a bit of a crawl out of the starting gate. It took him six months just to write the first two episodes. Number 40. Though he wrote the entire series alone, writing those first two episodes was so tough that he reached out to his friends for input. Number 41. Forget those first two episodes though. For Huang, writing the whole show was physically and mentally taxing. Once production wrapped, Huang had to get six of his teeth pulled. Number 42. While he neglected his teeth for Squid Game, Huang's old writing process was to drink half a bottle of soju to get the creative juices flowing. However, he said that he can't do that anymore. Number 43. The first season shook Huang up so bad that once it was all said and done, he wasn't sure he wanted to even do a sequel. Number 44. Still, Huang didn't write off the possibility. Just the opposite, in fact. Huang deliberately wrote the ending as a hook for a sequel season, just in case. Number 45. Like many viewers, Huang also toyed with the idea of Gihun just boarding the plane to go see his daughter. However, he doubted if that happy ending best represented the message or question of the series. Number 46. However things end up for Gihun, he'll still be played by Lee Jung Jae, just like the first season. Number 47. Huang wanted Lee to play Gihun because he wanted to destroy his charismatic image portrayed in his previous roles. Number 48. While he was largely a new face here in the US, 
US, Lee Jung Jae is a wildly famous actor in South Korea. He's been one of their top movie stars since the 1990s. Number 49. Of course, Ki Hoon is only one of the 456 players in the Squid Game. Ho Yeon Jung plays number 67, Kang Se Biao. Number 50. Before Squid Game, Ho Yeon Jung had been a fashion model for years. Number 51. While she is no stranger to the camera, she's never been in moving pictures. Squid Game is actually her very first acting role. Number 52. She was so nervous to audition that it took her three days to prepare to send her audition tape in. At the same time, she was also preparing for New York Fashion Week. Number 53. Thankfully, all of her prep paid off. When Huang saw her tape, he knew that she was perfect. He described her as wild and free, like an untamed horse. Number 54. As for Cho Song Woo, aka Player 218, he's played by Park Hae Su. Number 55. And as for who Cho Song Woo completely screwed, the man himself, Ali Abdul, is played by Anupam Tripathi. Number 56. While the character Ali is Pakistani, Anupam Tripathi is actually from India. Number 57. For casting Ali, Huang said it was difficult to find good foreign actors in Korea. He went with Tripathi because his Korean was so good. Number 58. Tripathi says that while he's played plenty of migrant workers in other Korean movies, he considers Ali to be the first fully-fledged character he's gotten to play. Number 59. To prepare to play him, Tripathi read articles and watched documentaries about migrant workers. He also talked with some migrant workers about their experiences being in Korea. Number 60. Oh Il Nam, player number one and mastermind of the Squid Game, is played by longtime Korean theater actor, Oh Young Su, number 61. Looking back, Squid Game drops subtle hints about Player One's identity throughout the show. In Red Light Green Light, when scanning to see if players move, the motion sensor doesn't actually scan him, so there's no chance of him actually being shot. Number 62. When the dormitory breaks out into a massacre, Frontman only turns the lights on and breaks it up when Player One says they need to stop. Number 63. Also, when Huang Jun Ho is searching through the player files, the 2020 roster starts at number 2. Number 1 is conspicuously missing from the file. Number 64. For his role in Squid Game, Oh Young Soo was nominated for an Emmy and won the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor. Number 65. This makes Oh Young Soo the first Korean born actor to win a Golden Globe. Number 66. However, at the time of writing, Oh is on trial for sexual misconduct, stemming from an incident in 2017. Number 67. Officer Huang Jun Ho is played by Wee Ha Jun. Number 68. The director teased that Huang Jun Ho might not be dead. When asked about him, all Huang said was that it's a secret and I can't tell you now. Number 69. Jun Ho's brother, Huang In Ho, aka the frontman, is played by Lee Byung Hun. Number 70. Lee Byung-hun worked with director Huang on The Fortress, so it was an easy yes when Huang asked him to appear in Squid Game. Number 71. Funny enough, one of the Squid Game players actually mentions Lee Byung-hun's name as an actor. So, while he plays frontman, his real self exists in the world of Squid Game. Number 72. Of course, there would be no Squid Game without the recruiter, played by Gong Yu. Number 73. Like Lee Byung Hun, Gong Yu also worked with Huang, but on the crime drama Silenced. Number 74. Squid Game has a number of other stars among its ranks. Hyo Sung Tae plays the ruthless thug Jung Dok Su, or Player 101. Number 75. If you see Player 101, you know that Han Min Yo, Player 212, isn't far behind, for better or worse. She's played by Kim Joo Ryong. Number 76. Not every player is as selfish as those two though. Shoutouts to Ji Young, aka Player 240, played by Lee Yu Mi. Number 77. Squid Game was produced and filmed from June to October 2020. Number 78. At one point, production went on hiatus for about a month due to the pandemic. Number 79. A number of city scenes were actually filmed in Daejeon, the fifth largest city in South Korea. Number 80. As for the island scenes where the Squid Game itself takes place, they were filmed on a small, privately owned island called Seonggapto. Number 81. To make things easier for international audiences to understand, Squid Game heavily emphasized visuals to communicate each game's rules. Number 82. The running visual theme of circles, triangles, and squares are all part of the layout of the Squid Game itself. Number 83. 
You can also see the circle, triangle, and square incorporated into the design of both the Korean and English title art. Number 84. Even the clothes of Squid Game are a nod to old-school Korean get-ups. The green tracksuits that the players wear were inspired by 1970s Korean athletic wear, called training bok. Number 85. Chai Kyung Sun was the production designer of Squid Game and was responsible for the otherworldly feel of the sets. Number 86. The funky, trippy stairs and hallways between the different games were inspired by the 4D infinite stair paintings of MC Escher. His most famous one, Relativity, was a particular influence on Squid Game's set. Number 87. Chai didn't just throw those stairs out there to look cool. They used the infinite stairways as a way to visually represent a form of bondage for the contestants. Number 88. When the players aren't climbing stairs, they're also walking through tunnels. These similarly bizarre tunnel areas were inspired by ant colonies. Number 89. For the tug of war game, what you see is what you get. The set was actually built to be more than 10 meters high. Some of the actors actually struggled on the set due to a fear of heights. Number 90. Thankfully, the glass stepping stone game was not actually that high. The game itself was only about 1.5 meters off the ground, and the height was simulated digitally in post-production. Number 91. In general, the green and pink color scheme used throughout Squid Game is a nod to children's color schemes heavily used throughout the 70s and 80s in Korea. Number 92. Korean kids from the 70s and 80s would also recognize the doll girl from the red light green light game. She's based on Yung Hee, a character who appeared at the time on Korean textbooks titled Chul Su and Yung Hee. Number 93. For Squid Game, they did give Yung Hee one specific update. They changed the doll's hairstyle to look more like Huang's daughter. Number 94. For the Dalgona game, they made sure the Dalgona was super authentic. All of the Dalgona comes from one street vendor based in Daihongo, a neighborhood in Seoul. This vendor has been making Dalgona for over 25 years. Number 95. On set, the Dalgona vendor made Dalgona for three days straight, starting at 8 a.m. and working late into the night. Number 96. Squid Game's score was directed and composed by Jung Jae-il. He also did the music for Parasite. Number 97. Once everything was said and done, Squid Game debuted on Netflix on September 17th, 2020. Number 98. While it took a few days to explode, Squid Game eventually pulled in massive amounts of viewers. Seriously, it broke all kinds of records that I don't even have to get into. The most impressive is that, to this day, it is still the most watched show in Netflix's history. Number 99. Despite the overwhelming global success, Huang said that he didn't receive any kind of bonus from Netflix. He was simply paid according to the original contract. Number 100. Speaking of money, just how much is Squid Game's grand prize of 45.6 billion won? Well, it's the equivalent of about 38.5 million US dollars. Number 101. Despite Huang's initial reservations and health concerns, he confirmed that he was working on a second season of Squid Game in November 2021. Number 102. At the time, Netflix said that nothing had been officially greenlit. However, in January 2022, Netflix CEO Ted Serenados himself said that more Squid Game was coming. Number 103. Sure enough, in June 2022, Netflix officially confirmed Season 2 of Squid Game was greenlit and on the way. Number 104. Huang confirmed that Gi-hun and Frontman were returning and that he wanted to explore more of Frontman's backstory. He also wanted to shed more light on the Squid Game recruiter. Number 105. In the meantime, Huang also worked with Netflix on a mockumentary, the best show on the planet. It's a comedy poking fun at Huang's newfound fame as a result of Squid Game's success. Number 106. When Netflix confirmed that season 2 of Squid Game was in the works, they also announced a reality show based on Squid Game. It's as you imagine. 456 players compete for $4.56 million based on games from the show. Number 107. Of course, it only makes sense that a real-world Squid Game would go awry. In early 2023, reports surfaced of on-set injuries. Apparently, ambulances were called for three different participants, but Netflix has denied the severity of their injuries. Season 2 of Squid Game is set for a 2024 release. In the meantime, in the spirit of Squid Game, let's play a classic kids game. Simon Says. Ready? Simon says, subscribe to Cinematica. Simon says, hit the bell icon to get notified for new videos. 
Simon says hit the bell icon to get notified of new videos. Well, did you win? Well, congrats! Your prize is more 107 Facts videos just like this one. And of course, a thank you for watching.